Now on to the actual first new article for this podcast episode. And it is all about something that's quite a my supposed wheelhouse, so. supposed outbreak in a Marburg virus in Equatorial Guinea. When people hear about Marburg virus, that might not ring any bells, but you will hear virus these days and you would go, what's going on? There's a new outbreak. Everyone's fearing what's going to be the next big thing that puts the whole world into shutdown. But when you hear what is in that family of viruses, Ebola being the most famous representative of Marburg viruses, then the alarm bells start ringing a, a, a lot more again. Mm -hmm. I know a little bit about Ebola, so I'm not a virologist, I'm a bacteriologist, and microbiology has lots of fields. You kind of pick the microbe that you like the most or you hate the most, depending on how, how you perceive <laughs> it. And then you dedicate your life to working on either a couple of bacteria or one bacteria mm -hmm. or a virus or a fungi or a parasite. That's true. So I know a bit about virology, but I'm not clearly not a virologist. Mm -hmm. I work with a lot of virologists. But when I tell you that there is something that's related to Ebola that has seen a sudden increase in cases in Equatorial Guinea, what is your first reaction? Scary thought. Scary Always thought. Scary thought, yeah. And so Ebola was a little while ago. I mm -hmm. think it was in the mid-2010s. I think it was like in the 2014 to 2016. 2016 something like that. Period. Mm -hmm. And there was not that many cases, but that was viewed as a pandemic, I think. That was viewed as a, a pandemic as well because it wasn't just restricted to the countries where it originated from. It was uh, spreading. It was yeah, spreading. Outside yeah. the initial site. Yeah. Do you remember this news story of like, the, I think it was a doctor who went to treat Ebola mm -hmm. and then he came back to America and then he was like, running all around and he was jogging and he didn't know he was positive for Ebola and they had all this like footage of him like going from place to place and it was a big do you, do you remember this I story? don't remember this yeah so yeah. yeah so I think very bravely went to the front mm -hmm. lines to right. treat Ebola and for those of you who don't know Ebola basically gives you a hemorrhagic fever with pretty high mortality rate horrible way to die yeah and you pretty much you're bleeding out every orifice mm -hmm. and this is not necessarily Ebola it's a Marburg virus and mm -hmm. it's probably related quite closely to Ebola. For healthcare workers, what a huge risk to take Absolute, on. Absolutely. I might argue, and this argument is flawed because mm -hmm. the amount of danger you're mm -hmm. in for any disease is relative, but I think at least with COVID, the perceived level of danger was lower than Ebola at that time, I think, right? The, yeah, I feel like that too. Probably because COVID gives people the idea of a common cold when you first hear about it. That's right, whereas but, Ebola, you immediately think... Oh, I'm, I'm going to mm. bleed out of her mm -hmm. office and there's no treatment. I'm going to mm -hmm. die. So it was really scary at that time. And there was a sudden spike for cases and it took ages to settle and people were moving across country, but it never truly escalated to the point where there was global shutdown. I never That's truly right. escalated. That's it. right. How should the average person respond to this kind of headline now? This here heard about another virus. It is related to a very scary virus they know about. Mm -hmm. uh, it could spread to other countries. Mm -hmm. What should any person reading this kind of headline kind of respond to this with is my question. We don't know yet. Mm. I think we have to wait and see. Yeah. Potentially very scary, but we, we don't know. At least 16 suspected cases and nine deaths have been reported. Hopefully this doesn't escalate, but... Something to something to watch, I think. We have to understand how the news filters the articles that are interesting. Any any new virus is going to be of interest mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And previous to the global pandemic, the interest in infectious diseases, I can tell you from a personal level, just was nowhere near as high. I wasn't having as many students in my classes. I didn't have as many conversations with the media about anything to do with infectious disease. We were always here as microbiologists thinking this is important and interesting, mm -hmm. but people just didn't really care about it. The media will be a reflection of what people's general interests are. They won't report on something unless they think there's going to be some That's attention right. paid mm -hmm. to it. So now people's alarm bells are always kind of up their antenna are up that's, for this kind of virus. Right. so anytime you see a new virus it may be this marble related virus or any other new disease that is seen a sudden spike mm -hmm. people will think this mm -hmm. is newsworthy and report on it not overreacting or having an appropriate level of caution is totally fine that's right and as a microbiologist i always tell my students the means of transmission how a disease is spread is the only way that we will know how to stop the infection from spreading. So until Very you true. know how it's transmitted, mm -hmm. you won't know how to stop it. And in the case of Ebola, it was spread through droplets and blood that was basically a body, passed body from, secretions. Yeah, passed yeah. from person to person. Mm -hmm. And if you're bleeding out of every orifice when you have Ebola, then you are very, very able to spread it. That's right. And I believe 
the initial reason why the cases kept going up and up is mm-hmm. that part of the proceedings if a family mm-hmm. member passes away in certain parts of Africa where burial rituals the mm. burial rituals involve spending a certain amount of time with the corpses mm-hmm. in close proximity to mourn which is totally understandable but that's the last thing you want to do if the person dies they are still very very infectious or if their bodily fluids still contain the 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 viral that's right. particles. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of why it spread. But once they understood that that was the mechanism of transmission, that's how they were able to slow it down. This is something to keep an eye out for. Its scope mm-hmm. is pretty limited in terms of its geographic distribution at present. Its means of transmission is pretty well known. So mm-hmm. hopefully we can put mm-hmm. a clamp on it and really stop it from spreading further than it has to. I, th- I think it's a good thing that the world population is generally more aware of these kind of things and and potentials for pandemics to occur. Definitely a good thing. Hmm. You don't want to be too... Over-alarmed. You don't want to be over-alarmed. That's one one to watch. An appropriate Hmm. level of respect for the pathogen that may take over our lives is always a good thing. And uh, always bats, right? I think the original Ebola, the initial spreading event, the initial Mm -hmm. crossover event Mm -hmm. from... Uh, animals to humans they mm-hmm. call it zoonoses was from bats and in this case i think it's also originated in bats what are these bats doing is my question isn't there something about their immune systems that allows them to carry these diseases without getting sick or oh, must be something. something like that yeah they, they're um, just filthy <laughs> no, i'm not anti-bat here but i was i was going to say i you know i don't for instance know anyone with a, a pet toy bat but that's actually a lie <laughs> <laughs> oh, who, who do you know has my, a toy My bat? niece has a toy batty. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll Hopefully it's not a vessel of disease. Vessel, <laughs> it, it, it may very well be a vessel of disease. But Hopefully that, it goes through the wash. Yeah, but yeah, this every, for those of you who don't know, every single new virus, when they're trying to find, hey, where does it originate from? Like, it's infected humans. It, it, they can't get from somewhere. <laughs> Hendra virus, for those of us who live in Brisbane, so Hendra virus is named after one of our suburbs, I think. And for a long time, it affects horses and affects mm-hmm. humans as well. And people thought, oh, well, wh- where did it come from? Where is the original kind of animal carrier? Or is it just out in the wild? Or, or it turns out it's bats. And then they just kept looking. That was a mistake. They kept looking. And they, well, they kept finding new viruses. Oh, what's going on? Every single time is bats. Every single time a new virus comes. Always the bats. We find Poor bats. It. We find it in bats. So the main takeaway when you see articles around new pathogens that are emerging is that even if there are drugs and vaccines against them Mm -hmm. they may not be effective at scale so for ebola even though again this is not ebola but it's related to ebola i don't think you just go to your gp and get ebola vaccines currently i think they're reserved for people who work in healthcare Mm -hmm. and frontline the national stockpile in the u.s is a certain level i don't think it's enough to give everyone universal Ebola coverage Mm -hmm. but again the existing drugs and vaccines may not be effective for whatever the new pathogen is going to be exactly Which brings us to the idea of just how hard it is to discover brand new drugs and brand new vaccines.